Hey, I'm Mike Background. Today we're going to take a look at a 251 line from Jimmy Weibel. Let's take a look. So before we get to the lesson, I want to talk about this guitar. This guitar belonged to Jimmy Weibel. I've mentioned many times in the past that Bruce Foreman was my mentor for years, and I got this from Bruce. The story around this guitar, from what I understand, is when Bruce Foreman first moved to L.A. to start teaching at the University of Southern California, him and Jimmy met and became very close friends. And Bruce is famous for playing his red guitar. Nowadays, he mostly plays Barney Kessel's old guitar, but he has a red L5 that he's always played. And Jimmy liked it so much that he wanted to get his own red guitar. Jimmy Weibel gave it to Bruce when he passed away. The only thing I've changed on it is Jimmy had an old DeArmond acoustic pickup on here that he had to actually mangle the pickup cover to make it fit. And you could still there's still a little residue here from, from what he did. I decided to put in a Gibson pickup on this and put it back to a standard look. It definitely wasn't Jimmy's main guitar. It's a Jay Terser, so it's a fairly inexpensive instrument. But it's very cool to have something that belonged to him and to be able to play his music on a guitar that he actually played at one point. I modified this line to make it fit over the first couple bars of Autumn Leaves. Now, I'm playing through the progression in double time. Rather than spending a whole measure on each chord, as it is in the tune, I'm playing it two beats each to make it fit Jimmy's line. But the idea is the same. You could slow it down to half time and play it over Autumn Leaves just the same. Now, so the progression here is A minor 7, D7, G major 7, C major 7, F sharp minor 7 flat 5, B7, and E minor 7. This is the first eight of Autumn Leaves. And those are the chord shapes that we're going to use to visualize what's going on here. Now the fingerings will change drastically because <clears throat> Jimmy wasn't a fan of barring when it came to things like this. Because if you were barring a chord shape, I couldn't manipulate one of these voices because a one finger covers two voices. So he would give them separate fingers so you could then manipulate what you're doing. Start on A minor 7. So we're starting with our pinky on a D note here on the third string, on the seventh fret. And then we come down here to A on the sixth string. And then we're going to come and bring these two fingers, the second and third finger, down to G and C on the fourth and third strings. And we see that's an A minor 7 right there. That's the same as I would play here. I'm just playing it differently now, right? And then I'm going to take my pinky, I'm going to come down to E flat. Now this this is the flat fifth, but I don't think that's what Jimmy was thinking of. I don't think he was saying A minor 7 flat 5. He was picturing that this note is going to come down a half step to D. Just just a leading tone. Now, when it's important, when I do this, I want to keep sustaining that C on top. And then I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to play D and F sharp. And then come up with C again. And then come down to A flat. My first finger on the sixth string. And then my second finger on F sharp again. And then I'm going to come that, bring that down to come down to G on the sixth string and B over here on the third string. And what I'm doing here. It's important to sustain the melody while you're playing these these notes that accompany. So my melody is and I want to hear that. So we can see right here I'm going to A minor 7 leading down to D7 and then from D7 I go to A flat 7 which is the tritone sub of D7. So they're one and the same. Now, Jimmy does this a lot in his arranging. 
he'll go five, tritone sub for that five, down to one. He does this all throughout his arrangements. And so that's a cool little Jimmy line to pick up. Once I get down here to G, I'm gonna sustain this B note with my third finger. And I'm gonna go D, E, F sharp, and then I'm gonna hold that note. And then with my first pink finger, I'm gonna come down to C, and my pink is gonna come onto E here on the fifth and second string while holding the F sharp and the B still. This gives me a C major 7 sharp 11. Root sharp 11, 7th, and 3rd here. So, so far. That's a really cool sounding line that we can take around and apply to all kinds of two fives. second chunk it's just the same line again just instead of starting here on the fifth fret I'm starting on the second fret same thing but when I go to E I'm not going to E major I'm going to E minor so I'm just going to hold same thing my melody is on top The reason this works over the B minor 7 flat 5 is because even though it kind of has that flat 5, I'm more viewing that as a, a leading tone into the 5 chord. So because it's just a leading tone, I don't really think this shape really has a 5th in it. There's no 5th in this. So it works the same over a minor 7 flat 5 or a minor 7. So you get double your mileage out of this line. Thanks for checking out the lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.